our reaction to Lewis Hamilton joining Ferrari in 2025. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the P1 podcast with Matt and Tommy. My God, I've never felt <laughs> more, more giddy all over the place. I don't know what's going on. Tommy, oh what is happening? God. This is the emergency podcast of all emergency podcasts. I cannot believe we're here. We've literally just recorded a predictions video where we didn't even mention about Lewis Hamilton and George Russell or Mercedes because they were locked in. And, of course, a few days later, it's like, OK, biggest bombshell in Formula One history. Uh, on, I can't I can't get over this. I can't get over this. Lewis Hamilton is joining Ferrari in 2025. <laughs> it doesn't sound what real. What is even happening? As you're saying are we it. are we are we awake right now? Am I gonna am I gonna just be like, oh, well, that was a God, that was it, genuinely. I would think this was a weird dream. I'd be like, Tommy, you never guess what I dreamt of last night. Lewis Hamilton joining Ferrari. No, oh, shut up, Matt. What were you? Do you have some cheese before you went to bed? You know what I mean? Like that. It is, what, it is what's going on? I don't know what's going on, especially because we we hyped up silly season uh, this year and all the driver contracts are out of contract. And then Charles gets announced at the same team. Lando gets announced at the same team. And we were going, oh, God, it's going to be the same, isn't it? <laughs> but no, uh, Hamilton drops the chaos bomb of all chaos bombs. And oh, my word, I, I it still can't compute in my brain that this is happening it is probably the most exciting, insane Formula One news ever, maybe. I literally can't remember a crazier moment uh, in terms of, like, silly season. It's absolutely mad. It doesn't feel real. Like, this does not feel tangible. You know, you, you see the announcement and you're just like, huh? Huh? Yeah, the driver that was not... Did, we've had these rumours before, especially, like, Hamilton joining Ferrari has always been a thing. So every time it comes up, you go, nah. And yeah, because it and then, has been rumoured before, yeah, hasn't it? Many and, times. He's got a close relationship with Ferrari. He likes Ferrari. He buys, you know, he's bought Ferrari cars before and he, he knows the, the president of Ferrari and things like that. But you always just go, oh, this is just silly season rumours trying to get a story. And then it's like, oh, it's being reported here. It's being reported here. It's being reported here. It's like, this is happening. Oh, my God. And... This is unbelievable. I can't... It is just the most insane news ever. It's, it's mad. And this is how I know deep down that I love Formula One to the absolute core of my being because I see that news and then I'm then just like running around the I've house. Like, around. What do I do? Like We're texting each other. Like, what, what happens now, Tommy? Like, not only Hamilton joining Ferrari, but then how does the domino effect? Is this the small domino? In, or, and then the big domino is, I don't know, Nicholas Latifi returns. Like what, what, what's going to be the end, the end thing here? Because clearly this is not just going <clears> to <throat> be a one move thing. This is going to cause chaos. Utter chaos. This is what it reminds me of is, um, and, and it's also a similar time that, that when, if you remember the, the COVID year where we didn't actually start the season until later on and we, it was announced that uh, Sebastian Vettel was leaving Ferrari and that caused a big domino effect. But it was for the year after, before the season had even started. And, and that is the crazy thing, that Hamilton is joining Ferrari. That is absolutely mind-blowing. But we're going into this season, and he will be driving for Mercedes still. Th that, to me, is crazy. It's not even like it's happened halfway through the season. It's like, oh, okay, we've got another whole year of this. The constant rumours, you know, what if Mercedes are good? What if Ferrari get bad? Like, has he made the right choice? It's going to be crazy. And then, like you say, this is just going to be the domino effect that just causes absolute carnage. So I think on that point, let's let's dissect what you just said there, because it, why now? That is a really good question, uh, which I don't think is actually in our list of questions. Which uh, is someone what, what... did say why now. Uh, Luke, Luke up high. Why before oh, yeah. we've even seen the 2024 okay. car? Let me read that out then. Look up high comes in with why before we even see the 2024 car? Wouldn't Hamilton at least wait to see if Mercedes made a step forward before thinking about a move to Ferrari? It's a very good point. He's given up on Mercedes before he's even seen the car roll out in 2024. And you would think Lewis Hamilton, the statistical greatest of all time, has the flexibility to decide when he wants to go 
you know, at, at whatever point of pleasing that he desires, right? Like you would think Ferrari would take him halfway through the 2024 season. What I'm wondering is whether the, there is a chain of events going on here where Hamilton's had to decide sooner than perhaps ideal, because from a business perspective, from a driver's perspective, it doesn't make all that much sense. He hasn't even had testing and he's gone, nope, I'm done. No, nope, all good. Uh, especially as well when you hear these murmurs of, oh, well, for the first time in three years, the, the car actually feels drivable on the simulator, says Anthony Davidson. Yeah. And it's like, Hamilton's gone. No, I don't believe you. I'm out. Yeah, it's crazy. The, the only thing that springs to mind is potentially the fact that Charles Leclerc has locked in this big contract with Ferrari, of course, and... Science hadn't yet, so maybe it was that case of like, if Hamilton wanted to do this, it has to be now. Like, it is literally a like, take the leap now because science hasn't signed. And we'll get into science later because this is going to be another fascinating kind of aspect to it. Um, but maybe that is it that that science hadn't signed yet, so it was literally like Hamilton could have these talks now. That's one side of it. The other side of it is that. My word, what is that W14 like that Hamilton sat in it and gone, peace, I'm off. <laughs> like, I, I don't think it would be that bad, but it can't I just be a think great he, car. He must be judging it from his previous experiences and going, well, they can't have changed it that much because we haven't got, had the regulation changes yet. <clears> so <throat> yeah. clearly Hamilton doesn't think that there is that, that, he, that they can close the chasm between themselves and Red Bull before 2025 so instead he's gone well you know what i've always wanted to be in red overalls exactly it's so the last roll of a dice um you know he's not he's not got loads of time left maybe he will stay for for a bit longer and maybe he will want to see till 2026 but yeah we all we were i think everyone was mentally prepared that hamilton would end his career at mercedes mm. it just seemed so certain uh, and for him to to take that switch now uh, is mind blowing and so unbelievably exciting as well. Now, Tommy, yes. I want to. I know it's usually fan questions that we read out, but I want to submit my own question, which is: okay. so, so Matt P one Gallagher comes in with what's going to happen to Leclerc? It's um, a very good point because Ferrari have you know stated and been very clear that Leclerc is the golden boy he is the the number one kind of I mean Ferrari haven't exactly executed the greatest of strategies with him um, but we we all believe that Leclerc was the one that Ferrari were channeling all their resources into to make sure that he stays for as long as possible to win world championships and now Lewis Hamilton's joining the team <laughs> and Lewis Hamilton is not a number two driver now on one side of me being a massive Leclerc fan I am so excited to see how those two stack up against each other in a team. Yeah. Like, I am so unbelievably Peggy 18 at <laughs> thinking about that, right? But on the flip side, <laughs> I am scared. I am absolutely petrified that Lewis Hamilton is going to come in and just wipe the floor with, it, with, with, with Charles and... I then worry about what the future might look like. But that's just the pes pessimism inside of me. It does, it does make you wonder. Like, I personally think that Charles uh, has the, the talent to be able to, to compete with Hamilton. Um, I'm not saying he's a better driver than Hamilton, but like, he is so unbelievably quick. I think he's one of the best drivers in Formula One. So it, he has what it takes, but. Apart from like your side, you've got to think what Charles thinking that he's just signed this massive new contract with Ferrari, and then they're like, "Right, your teammate is now seven-time world champion Lewis Hamilton," and he's like, "Oh my god, oh, okay," because because it would, it there would regardless of how much you back yourself, you are then like, "Well, they have signed the most legendary Formula One driver of this era." you know, a huge star, he's not there to be my number two driver, is he? Like, he's going to want... He's, he's come to win the world championship. But I want to win the world championship for Ferrari. This is, like, my dream. 
and it, and it, that whole dynamic has completely flipped. Like it's insane. So, so there's a dynamic that you have been constantly bringing up on the podcast around Lewis Hamilton and George Russell. And if they have a championship winning car, they will take points off of each other. We then go to Lewis Hamilton with Charles Leclerc, which I think is even stronger in some senses because of Charles' love for Ferrari and wanting to win a world title with them. And then, of course, Hamilton wanting to get that eighth. That could be, as much as Charles is you know, a very nice, polite human being, you do wonder whether there will be that clash between the mm. two of them where both of their ambitions just collide. And it absolutely petrifies me. I, I know I said about Lewis Hamilton wiping the floor with him, but I, I don't I don't believe he'll do it. I think that Charles will be there with him um, at, and, you know, del, you know, delusion, whatever. But I, I still believe Charles has the talent, especially in the races. We've, we've seen that uh, time and time again. And also, of course, in qualifying, he's an outstanding qualifier. But there is something that really concerns me that Ferrari have found something, which is great. They've sold Hamilton the dream. Hamilton joins, wins the eighth world title, and Charles Leclerc finally has a world title winning car and doesn't win the world championship. <laughs> yeah. I would internally combust. Yeah, it's so true. Like it is absolutely insane that Yeah, you can't you can't even claim that Hamilton has left because he's scared of George Russell, which is of course there's no chance that's the case because he he was so good and wiped the floor with him really last last year and they they had their moments where they were like colliding and I did say that it's an interesting narrative where George is the future of that team how long do they keep pushing it with Hamilton now that that whole problem has gone to Ferrari where you've got the young up and coming talent who has shown that he can win races he's so loyal to Ferrari but then you've got you've got this it's it's absolutely crazy. Um, it's such a bonkers move for so many reasons. I absolutely love it. Uh, I am one of these people that have always wanted to see Lewis Hamilton join Ferrari. Um, I think it's just such an exciting thing to see uh, one of the greatest of all time and one of the most legendary drivers probably like arguably like top two or three if not the most legendary formula one driver ever with the most legendary team ever is with the, the most mo legendary up and coming world champion in charlotte Leclerc. <laughs> but like what a combination and that is probably why he's he's gone for it he has been lured in by the the love of ferrari like that it, it shows that for all the memes and the jokes about ha ha clown strategy, all this, Ferrari can still bring in a driver like that because they're Ferrari. There's something about it. They are just, you know, look what Vettel did. Like he went there, Alonso went there, um, Michael Schumacher <laughs> and went there. Both of them had there. great times. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. And, uh, and yeah, you can argue that, that Schumacher went, it went really well. But the other two, like Alonso and Vettel, when it didn't work out, but Hamilton's seen that and he's still like, yeah, I want to drive for Ferrari. It just now, shows the pull they have. I've actually realised what the, I reckon, the last bit of pull that was necessary for Hamilton to join Ferrari. Do you know what it is? Company car? No. Well, okay. that. But also, <laughs> I think he, Hamilton looked last year and saw just how much fun... Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc had when they did the alphabet game with us. So I think Hamilton wants a piece of that. He does. I think he saw that, you know, he's going to get an opportunity to potentially film with P1 and gone, that's it. I'm he wants to do an hour podcast with us where we talk about his hair in a Zandvoort hotel. <laughs> uh, that is clearly the reason. Yeah, absolutely. Right, uh, next question. <laughs> uh, let's go with O2 Rachel D. Who would Ferrari base their car on? Seven-time world champion or possible future world champion? Now, I think this, this particular question is obviously slightly looking at, hey, what Red Bull do with Max Verstappen and, and all that good stuff, even though Alex Albon very eloquently explained that it's kind of based on Max Verstappen, but not as much as everyone says, and it's not like nobody else can drive the car. It's just that if you're the fastest driver, you are going to get you know, preferential development paths and that sort of stuff. Um, I, I, 
I, well, Hamilton can't just join and be like, I like it like this. And then they're gonna, Ferrari go, oh, God, drop all the tools. We need to change everything to what Hamilton likes. I, I don't necessarily see that. Charles, of course, is the one that's bedded in. And Ferrari are just going to build a car. And then, depending on how long Hamilton decides to stay at Ferrari, there may well be a, a shape in it, depending on how, how well they do. So I think it is very much based upon who is doing the best. Because I know for a fact Ferrari won't make a decision on who they're going to actually... Uh, back in this scenario because they never do it now. <laughs> I can imagine they they have a board meeting and they go right we've signed Lewis Hamilton and then they all just sit around and go so who who do we want to win now then <laughs> yeah <laughs> they just seen I, I think there is there is like I wonder how much of it from the other side like I said that Hamilton sees that legendary Ferrari status and wants to wants a bit of that the other side, Ferrari, still want that kind of like, we're the biggest team in Formula One, we can get Lewis Hamilton on board. And they've not really thought it through properly. It's kind of like, you know, signing the two best football players in the world that play in the same position or something. And you're like, this yeah. is great on paper, but what do we do now? Where you kind of want that, but then you go, is this going to work? So, yeah, it, it's... It's going to be fascinating to see if they do that. Um, we've seen before that, say, 2022, Carlos Sainz struggled with how the, the car was going. It suited Charles down to the ground. Then uh, Carlos got more confident. Then there was that bit in the middle of the season last year where uh, Sainz was looking like the absolute goat and performing really well. So it would be fascinating to see which direction they go go in. But for me, Hamilton is one of if not the best driver in terms of adaptability, the fact that he's gone through so many eras. I know is he hasn't are Team LH listening this? to this? Because Tommy is gassing Hamilton up low tomorrow in this podcast. So just <laughs> write it down, okay? Most legendary, most adaptable. Like this man, you're getting ready for a, a shell uh, video with him, aren't you, with the alphabet challenge? I see it already, Tommy. But, but he, he is the most, like, the. I know he's not one in this new era, um, but like we've mentioned many times, not many people have. But he has adapted every year from like when he started to them completely changing the cars in like 2009 uh, and he won again and then they changed it again um, to to like the hybrids and he won again and they changed it to wider cars and he won again. And he has shown himself to be able to adapt to these cars. So that's why I think that whatever the Ferrari is like, Hamilton will be able to drive it and get the best out of it. So, um, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be so fascinating to see how they how it goes down because the fact that they now have this driver dynamic, the one I mentioned so many times about the problem with George Russell and Hamilton being teammates, it's now just shifted to Ferrari, and now we see is it is Hamilton's idea. Literally, the fact that he's going to give it a couple more years, I I don't think this is the case. I'm sure you're going to say exactly the same that no way is this the case. But two more years, I've driven for Ferrari. Charles Leclerc becomes Goodbye. double world champ. Oh. <laughs> no, but like he's driven for Ferrari and he's he's kind of ticked that off his bu F1 bucket list and he goes. He's going to want to win a championship. I think that's the bare minimum. I think that's yeah. the bare minimum. Is I've gone to Ferrari. I've driven. I've given it a go. Something I've yeah. always wanted to do, and then upwards from that is winning and world titles. Now, something that you know I'm really interested to see is how Hamilton firstly copes with integrating into an Italian Formula One team, which is something that is not the easiest thing in the world to do. You know, they Ferrari expect you to relocate and all this sort of stuff and, you know, try and embed yourself in a team um, like Ferrari. But also, how is he going to cope when he has a 12-second pit stop at Hungary? <laughs> or how is he going to cope when... They don't pit him for hard tyres at the end of a race at Silverstone. What I think he's going to do is he's going to pit anyway. That's, that's what I'm really interested to see is can Hamilton tidy up the areas where Ferrari are lacking and have been lacking? Um, and, and this is what we've discussed before. What if like a Verstappen went there or a Hamilton, oh my God, it's happening. Have, it yeah. still doesn't feel real. But having someone like Hamilton go into Ferrari, I feel like he genuinely will just tie the loose knots and, and just figure stuff out. And he could win another five world titles with Ferrari. Um, probably not going to happen, but we are going to see what it's potentially like 
for Ferrari to actually work well, maybe. Fingers yeah. crossed. Yeah, yeah. We like you said, we we've had those discussions of like maybe Ferrari need to go back to the Schumacher era where someone comes in and they demand it like Charles Leclerc is an unbelievable driver like I've said many times on this podcast uh, and you have said many times on this podcast Don't but, say but his one <sighs> but his one slight flaw is that he's maybe too, too much nice. of a nice guy and he will come into the pits and yeah he will just be like yeah great whereas things that come to mind is um you know where uh there, there were moments where Hamilton was going to, I think, pit for fastest lap in one of the races and he knew his tyres were, were worn and he remembered back in, like, China 2007 when he rolled into the pits and he, he thinks about things like that and that's the kind of thing I think that could really help Ferrari where they go, you need to pit for Inters and, and Hamilton would be the kind of ballsy driver that goes, I'm the driver, I know exactly what these tyres are doing, this is what we should be doing and he just does it uh, and that is something that I think Ferrari desperately need and it's what it's, and it, to be fair it's what Carlos has done every now and then um, but Carlos has Carlos has always been like maybe not as quick as Charles but he's maybe got the brain power uh, to to like no, more he, of that racing mind, brain power is like. savage. I think it's more just um, the fact that he's he is more savage. I think that's probably more the yeah case, yeah. Right? He, he's Charles like Clare he's has more brutal. a very high functioning brain, Tommy, uh, and and you know, brain power is sorry. You know, I, you I, know I what I meant. Power. I know what you mean. I just <laughs> you know wanted what to I cover meant. that one off. My God, I'm not Charles calling Charles Claire <laughs> stupid, even though he yeah. himself he calls himself, himself stupid. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, I'm saying that yeah, he would he he would basically be more ruthless and be like, no, this is what we're doing. Uh, and to have a quick driver like that and in that situation, yeah, that's why he's been so hard to beat. That's why he's won loads of world championships. So it's going to be um, exciting. But, of course, um, it does mean that Carlos is, well, what happens Well, yeah, that's a great question, Tommy. That is a question from Misa <laughs> Iwaki. What's happening to Carlos? Um, a big question. Uh, we have just done our 2025 uh, driver team predictions. And I feel like Tommy might be onto something now uh, mm. because I thought he'd stay for another year and perhaps he was going to had Hamilton decided, actually, I want to come. Um, as of recording right now, we don't know what's happening to Carlos. We also don't know who's joining Mercedes. So we're going to discuss that now. And um, for Carlos, I mean, do you just see it being the route that you expected now, Tommy? I do. Um there is, of course, now the fact that that's happened, uh, there is a possibility that it could just be a straight swap for Mercedes. Um, I do wonder if Mercedes now with these rumours and how much maybe it's been, maybe they've been blindsided because from what we've seen on Twitter, this has happened very quickly. It's been like, oh, I think this is happening to, oh my God, it's happening. So you've got to think that normally these things appear out with constant rumours for weeks and weeks and weeks and then it happens. So you've got to think that Mercedes surely didn't know that this was going to happen this quickly. They, they surely don't have a driver locked in already. And with these Formula 1 teams, they always like to do it where they like to save themselves the blushes, even if it maybe is quite a snap decision. They're like, oh, we don't want to look silly that Hamilton's left. We want to almost announce first, blah, 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 to Mercedes and things like that. So... I think there is a possibility for Carlos to go there because it would be that he's a great driver. I think he'd work very well with George Russell, actually. It'd be a quick driver pairing. Um, however, I do think Carlos's best bet is to build that Audi team around him. And now he's got that perfect opportunity to do that where to go and he doesn't have a drive for Ferrari, for to drive uh, <laughs> S-Box for a year hope Audi build the engine of all engines for the new engine regs in 2026 and he's laughing like Lewis Hamilton did in 2014 that he's got a car that's five seconds quicker than everyone else don't know if that's necessarily going to happen but it's a gamble worth doing I think but then of course that is thrilling because uh, if he does I kind of want him to do that because it also leaves a slot of Mercedes and then the puzzle just keeps the dominoes just keep falling and it's like Another change, another change, another change, and we can constantly be like excited for drivers just going everywhere. <laughs> exactly, and I guess you know makes 
I wouldn't say the most sense from a Carlos Sainz perspective, as I kind of argued that it, I just think it'd be a waste of a year for him to go into a car that's not going to be anything like the new regulations that we have in 2026. Yeah, he'd embed himself in the team, but realistically, I don't think that's a huge advantage and probably will feel like a, a missed year for Carlos. Um, but maybe that's the only route he has now because I can't, there's, there makes no sense for a straight swap, especially if Carlos has his sights set at Audi for 2026, why would you go to Mercedes for a year? It's a waste for Mercedes and it's a waste for Carlos because you're putting resources into a driver that's not going to stay. So for me, I know that there's, there's one man. There is one man that is sat here with or without a cigar. I don't know. It just feels like it, it kind of, the image just, he's a boss. Is is Mr. Fernando Alonso just sitting back quietly <laughs> looking at all of this drama because he loves a bit of transfer driver market, silly season drama. And he will at any point burn a contract to go somewhere else. I genuinely think Alonso will go to Mercedes. If, that would if be this wild. is wild, we're going to have but, to do our silly season again, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. Our predictions are finished now, mate, but that is why does. not? Why not? Because surely yeah. you want, Mercedes want a driver that is performing at the absolute top notch. If you have Carlos Sainz go there, one, it's a waste. And two, Carlos Sainz and George Russell, are you extracting the absolute thousandth out of that car? I would say not if you compare it to Fernando Alonso. Fernando Alonso was a top three driver last year. We saw incredible performances from him. Why not? Like I, just, what a what a move that would be for Alonso. I'm sure he has in his contract with Aston. If it's rubbish, then I can leave. And I, I or maybe if he hasn't won or something, there must be something yeah. to get Alonso out there. He's the burner of all bridges. He knows how to get out of contracts. I I, I see it. I genuinely would love to see because Alonso and Russell they get on so well as well. They do. Yeah, they've forget. been partying They're like together. Besties. They're playing ping pong on private jets. I think Fernando will genuinely go to Mercedes. Oh my god. This silly season is the goat. Um I'm so excited. I just can't wait to see how it's going to pan out. Like that is a good theory. I think the options for me of if Sainz does go to stake, I see it between Ocon, Albon and yeah, maybe Alonso is is a is a good shout. It it all it all depends what Mercedes want to do of like we said that Ferrari now have this problem, but is it Mercedes now uh is it their chance to basically go, right, George is the golden boy now. Put someone in that's gonna grow with him. You could argue <laughs> Esteban Ocon and a teammate is not the best idea. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe needs not. His own Formula One team. Just yeah, I've got a one driver team. Yeah, um, <laughs> but Alex Albon, maybe. Um, I think he's he'd definitely be a, a great, shout as well. He'd, he's definitely he'd be a, a great uh, number two driver to George. No disrespect to Albon. I think he'd be quick. He wouldn't be like complete number two driver, but I think he'd be that good level where he wouldn't it wouldn't be too chaotic and they're good mates as well. So, What I would say, Tommy, is, and I mean no disrespect to GR63, has he proved he is the golden boy for Mercedes moving forward? Because mm. for me, he's had some standout performances. Of course, he won at Brazil. He's one of the only drivers to have won in the last couple of years. But last he's year, also he had a very lacklustre season last year in particular. So for me, Mercedes, when you look at, you know, when you look at the results, of course, he beat Hamilton the year before. But of course, Team LH will argue that to the hills that there was reliability and testing new setups testing for the weird rubbish setups car and, things, yeah. and that sort of stuff. So for me, I, I don't think that Mercedes are in the position to go, yes, George, you are our future. You are our next 10 world, 10 time world champion. So that's why I'm entertaining the fact that I think Alonso would. Yeah. I think Alonso would be a fantastic just for a year or two, warm that seat up for Kimi Antonelli, and then you're absolutely <laughs> flying. You're on that hype train. Uh, oh, trust yeah. me, I, I feel like that is that is the future. But but as of right now, I think Alonso has a couple of years, gets a few wins, maybe even a world championship if Mercedes sort their life out. And my God, Formula One would be a better place for it. And also, you've got to think 
with the greatest of respect to someone like Alex Albon or or Ocon or someone, for Formula One management and stuff, it's a game of egos. And like I mentioned earlier, Mercedes are going to be embarrassed that Lewis Hamilton has left that team. A legendary driver like Lewis Hamilton has left them. He doesn't believe in them. And what better way to be like, flex your muscles and be like, we've got Alonso. Like that, that is a big statement to be like, we've got Fernando Alonso. Whereas Alex Albon, he's had a fantastic year. He's been really, really good. But it's not like uh, you, you, you know, you're out your seat like, oh my God, Alex Albon's gone there. Whereas Alonso is like huge PR, like, oh my God, Alonso's gone to Mercedes. It's massive. Like they are a huge manufacturer that have just lost the most commercially, you know, most commercial driver it, the sport's ever seen. And they, they're going to want to replace him with someone massive. So, yeah, Alonso does... The more we're talking about it, Alonso yeah. does make more sense. Look at oh, Tommy. my God, I love Alonso's. F1. I know. Genuinely, the 2024 pre-season has been better than 2023. <laughs> it really has. Oh, what a year already. <laughs> Oh so my good. god! I am like ah. Oh, now I'm, I'm like, why I'm can't giddy. this be now? Why, can't, why do we have to wait a year to see Hamilton at Ferrari? What? Just say them out loud. How is that real? Like that's no, not I real. I can't. I just uh, can't. We we could genuinely talk about this for 15 hours. I think. Um, yeah. And I think we will also do another video slash podcast, just kind of talking about the whole connotations of what is this move genuinely going to do to the whole driver market. Um, we're going to maybe let the dust settle slightly with this one just to kind of figure out what is actually going on. Um, <laughs> but Tommy, unless you have anything else to to add, uh, give me your final thoughts. My final thoughts are just thank you, the silly season gods. We were starved last season and you've dropped the greatest one in the history of Formula One. So thank you. Yeah, I would say similarly, uh, I am so excited to see Hamilton at Ferrari. I think that it's going to be an insane partnership uh, between him and, and Leclerc. And I just really pray that, I don't know, on one side, I'm like, I really want Ferrari to be really, really good. But secondly, I want Charles to get a world championship. So that's going to be a conversation later down the yeah. line, I think. But anyway, we'll get on fine. to that one. Am I going to cry or am I going to be happy? We'll have to find out. <laughs> See you soon, everybody. Lots of love. Bye. Bye.